My name is uh, Tom Debbie-Voyes, and I'm a director for Bosch Software Innovations. And as you mentioned, uh, Bosch is the world's largest um, auto manufacturing integrator um, and, and a leader in that space. But we're also in 100 different industries. And I'm here today with Troy Foster, who's the CTO of Bosch Software Innovations in America. Bosch Software Innovations um, is an, a combination of two acquisitions, the Software Innovation Visual Rules product and the Inubit Business Process product. OK, thanks, Tom. Um, so as we've been saying, um, Bosch is a large manufacturer. It's one of the world's largest manufacturers, in fact. We make lots and lots of different things. So we're here today to talk about things and connecting these things together. Um, you may, so you may, here's some examples. So you may know us from our, our dishwashers here in the US and other high-end appliances. We're certainly connecting those. Um, we also have um, a medical division where we have medical devices. Uh, in, in Europe, you may see us on things like windmills and solar panels. So um, there are a lot of different things um, that, we're, that we're trying to connect. And uh, we have a long-term vision for doing that. Um, vision is underway, and, and we're underpinning that with um, the BPM platform and the business rules platform that we're going to talk a little bit about. Um, so you can imagine if we're going to connect all of these things together, um, we're going to have to uh, be able to scale uh, up quite a bit. So in the Internet of Things is this idea that there's billions of devices that are out there. But let's try to get real and think about what they do. What we've discovered is that there's this increasing accelerated deployment of low-cost uh, CPUs that have a number of capabilities, it, not just gathering data. It also gives localized autonomous control of certain processes out there. Um, one example that Bosch is involved in is the microgrid topic. You may have heard about the microgrid a little bit uh, in the uh, last hurricane. Um, it, that's the idea that we can take a building or a, a group of buildings and separate it from the grid and have its own power source, right? But that gets to be a very complicated uh, balancing capability. So we have soft, um, software and hardware solutions for actually managing um, the, that type of situation. Um, in addition, there's as Troy mentioned, the medical devices or the te um, telemedicine that's out in the field, that stuff does um, goes through procedures and ha takes patients in their home through a procedure of exam self-examination. Um, and then there's more fun and exotic things that we're aware of, such as um, the health industry. We have this gamification going on of running, like, for instance, the Strava application, which integrates um, your cell phone with the heart monitor and, and GPS and so forth. So there's billions of these devices, um, and, but many, many requirements associated with that. And today, we're just going to talk about one of those requirements as it specifically relates to BPM, since it is a BPM conference, and business rules. Mm -hmm. So we talked, I mentioned that low-cost CPU device. Um, and one of them, and those CPU devices, have, we, we call ours a CCU, or com, uh, Communication and Control Unit. Um, they're very similar to a moat. And what a moat was, a moats have been around with the Department of Defense for quite a while. The moat is a, uh, is a little sensor network that can be deployed very easily in the field and gathers information from the sensor. So in this process, BPMN process at the top, we have a little bit of a data gathering sensor process going. And in the middle, there's a set of rules that are localized. These rules are localized up on that small, low-cost um, CCU or moat, as it is. And they are, the rules are essentially monitoring what's happening um, with that particular machine that, or sensors that it is monitoring. At, at some point, um, those localized rules decide that something's going wrong or something has to be notified up into the enterprise. So that's when the next, the middle layer of this process occurs, which is your monitor. And the monitor has a more complex set of business rules. And it's more aware of other machines, um, environmental conditions, any number of um, inputs that may not be available to, the, the, to our small computing device. 
right? And at that point, it can also discern a true a business event. This event it might be it's time to you know, perform predictive or preventive maintenance on a device, or someone needs to visit it and see you know, that something's going on, or there's information that's going to be of general long-term interest. So at that point, we are posting some message up to a state monitor. So we have this long-running uh, process uh, called the machine itself. And so that, um, and it, again, could, it, when the state occurs, then we get into the general BPM area of being able to launch uh, trouble tickets or other processes to take care of the machine itself. So this is just one aspect of the Internet of Things. So. <clears throat> okay, so just to kind of reemphasize a little bit of what Tom was saying there. Um, so on the rules side, now we're taking rules and we're implementing them at kind of two levels here. So first we're implementing them at the, the moat level or with our CCU device, the communication and control unit. Um, so that's the actual device that the sensors are connecting to, or you can think of it as kind of like the gateway device as well, right, for collecting information from all of these sensors. So it may have a certain level of rules where it's uh, looking at conditions happening on the machine, uh, the state of the machine, and it, what that level of rules is going to do then is maybe throw a condition back um, up to the uh, uh, process that, or the monitor um, that's uh, kind of controlling this. So, so we have this level of rules, and then maybe we have another level of, of rules at that, uh, at that process level. Um, so again, we're deploying rules down to the device level, and that device may be something very simple. It may be a full-blown you know, Linux on a chip. Um, you know, whatever it is, uh, and then we're also de deploying rules at this, um, this higher level. Okay, so I think now we're going to switch to a demo. A demo. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, just to make the, uh, um, just, uh, in, in this demo we have several virtual machines. We did not bring a CCU with us today. Um, we, we planned on it, but uh, our colleague from Germany's uh, luggage was lost. So you see now we made the change, and that's all. That's all related to the heartbeat of the moat uh, or the CCU, and how long it took to, um, for this to refresh on it. So it's very simplistic. Of course, um, we have a division in Bosch known as Rexroth. They're a very technical industrial controls division. They do predictive preventive maintenance on these large machines, such as grinders or milling devices. Um, and it's a whole sensor integration technology. They go in and they're looking at very small out of round changes, vibrational analysis and so forth. And, the, and they, the, we're gonna provide that information, the implementation of the regression analysis and vibrational analysis into this type of environment so that they can do you know, that predictive preventive maintenance. So, and you can imagine some of the um, customers that we've been talking to, how much a you know, $50 million piece of uh, milling device, how much that downtime is. So, so there, um, that's just one high level application. And then we have, we can move on, I guess, to others. Great. Just make this full size. <laughs> Okay, so yeah, we've been talking about these machines and, you know, the, again, to kind of recap this, we have all these what we call edge devices, right, or, or sensors on these machines and, and we have rules pushed out to that level and we have process on the back end that's dealing with these uh, conditions and states uh, that are being sent back from these, these edge devices. Um, so on the back end, we can start to do some interesting things. We can start to look at, you know, what's typically called big data and analysis on the big data. Um, making decisions, um, as Tom mentioned, uh, doing interesting things like predictive maintenance. Um, for example, we have a, a client, uh, John Deere, that's uh, saving themselves and their customers uh, lots of money by, um, you know, effectively trying to predict what's, you know, when machine parts are going to fail while the machine is in for scheduled maintenance. So that way the customer avoids, um, you know, spending lots of money taking machine offline in a very remote location, um, as an example there. Um, so we're doing, uh, again, interesting things uh, on top of that with these uh, rules and process. We can allow access to this information via portals such as the one you saw or, or the uh, mobile devices. So There's, Tom, I don't know if you have any more examples. The, uh, uh, our e-mobility solutions. Okay, so the plug-in electric vehicle is, as you know, is a very complicated kind of vehicle to support. And 
We're, in order to make the plug-in electric vehicle, we have to create this entire new ecosystem, like installing all new gas stations everywhere, but they're electrical, right? Um, and there's a lot of complexity in terms of uh, doing it uh, in a rural area and also being able to do uh, EV commute commuting from one area to another. So all of that has to be managed and maintained. Um, so we're looking at using a lot of this technology and, and teaming with some other um, organizations, particularly in the Department of Defense and the Los Angeles Air Force Base, we're using these types of sensor technology and integration and lo localized autonomous control to charge uh, trucks and vehicles for um, and do fleet administration. Mm -hmm. So, and I think another example we had too is uh, with our uh, security uh, solution, oh, right, yeah. uh, for border control and looking at. Uh, activities that happen on, on a border and deciding if they're a threat or not. Yeah, one of the uh, yeah, one of the large aerospace and defense contractors is using this technology technology um, on for a number of border um, applications, again, uh, in terms of, you know, identifying um, and using an, a combination of video analytics and our other technology to, ad um, to do threat assessment and response, so. So, so that's kind of an idea of the Internet of Things and what you can potentially do with uh, BPM systems. Um, I think we'll conclude at this point and yeah. ask if there are any questions.